the best Aquascafer 1200 in the world, Dave. Do you think? I think so. I've I've created a you in my time, and it certainly surpasses them. Oh well, that's a compliment. It's beautiful, and I think what makes it beautiful is it's a strong theme. Mm. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I think that's probably the backbone of the idea behind it as well, because when I put this together and I had the initial idea of what I was going to do, I thought, right, I'm going to steer away from what I normally do with an aquascape okay. and try and grow 20, 25 different plants because you get a bit carried away and excited with all the plants well, you can grow. Because you've got access to so many, I guess. Exactly, yeah. yeah. But then this time I thought, no, I'm going to hone down on a few species and make it more about two or three different types and get the impact just from a vast array of a small number of plants instead. So in here we've got, well, Vallis, the ferns and the tiger lotus are probably the main three that are in abundance more than anything else. There's a few other plants, but they're the main three. And that's what really gives you, um, gives you kind of the impact and a more, I would say, harmonious feel to the scape quite a soft feel rather than lots of this, a bit of that, and quite chaotic overall. Mm, mm, I agree. It's got a strong theme. We talked about that coherent theme versus, you know, less chaotic and because we're only using a relatively few amount of species, aren't we? Was there six six or seven species in the Yeah, I think overall there's six or seven species, but there's three, possibly four if you include the moss main species that I've dominated the scape with. Yeah. Um, and then tried to place them in an aesthetically pleasing way, yeah. which is what we're all trying to do with aquascapes, yeah. is position our hardscape and plants in a way that, that's... Um, pleasing on the eye. Yeah, it gives you your, your composition and your yeah. way you want it to look. Um, and overall, o o overall, with that, you want it to look natural. We're trying to create a, a, natural looking a habitat almost yeah. um, for the fish as much as we are for ourselves. Yeah, that's a good point, isn't it? We, at the end of the day, we're keeping living creatures, you know, are responsible for them, aren't we? Yeah. So, yeah. you know, the fact that it looks beautiful is almost a um, happy byproduct of the, the main goal of looking after these beautiful creatures, I'd say. Yeah. And we, I, I, I regard the plants almost in that regard, you know, we should be really looking after the plants, shouldn't we? Because they in turn look after the animals. This is it, I mean, fish do rely on the plants and they thrive off the plants. Yeah. They thrive off the plant growth, they thrive off the oxygen that they, the plants produce, they thrive off the conditions that the, the plants produce, you know, the water quality yeah. is usually exceptionally good in a densely yeah. thriving plant agrarian. At the end of the day, fish are all going to thrive in that environment created by the plants. Yeah, and that you can apply that to the earth, can't you? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because if you chop, yeah. or if you kill all the plants on the earth, we die. Yeah, I mean, um, <laughs> plants weren't here, we wouldn't be here. Yeah. But, you know, if we weren't here, plants could still be here. Oh, absolutely, yeah, they'd be a lot, probably a lot better. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> we're, yeah. we're just like, a deci you know, I suppose the word decimate, which actually, decimate is an interesting word, because you know what it actually means. Most people just think it means completely destruct, destroy. destroy, no. Mm. Remove one tenth. Oh, is that a Deci, deci is, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's what we're at. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And well, annihilate, you know, that's, that's get rid of everything. Destroy. Yeah, well, decimate. We have the capability of both of those things, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, we do. And we're, you know, if you look at what's happening in some of the, but I think, you know, just the, the act of of creating something like this, uh, connecting with it, and, and realizing what you're doing, paying attention to what you're doing, in terms of creating a beautiful environment, you know, for these living creatures, I think there's a lot of lessons we can apply there to our everyday lives. Absolutely, I think that's one of the benefits of having an atmosphere like this is, is yeah. what it teaches you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, that's it combines so many things that was and, and mm. you know, learning from it in more ways than one mm. is, is one of the biggest benefits for sure. Yeah. Let's go a bit techy because people like yeah. technology, don't they? Let's start from the top. Yeah. Always like to do that. The lighting is yeah, what's that? ONF uh, 90 pendants, and that's hung from two ONF squares, they're called. Oh, okay, one interesting. Left, one right. Uh -huh. What uh, wattage is that? I don't know. I do. I'll say on the label there. 90. 90. Oh. It's quite bright. Is that on full whack? Is it controllable? 
yeah, it is controllable from the app, and that is on full whack, I think, yeah. 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 And that's about right, isn't it, 90 watts for this size tank? Yeah, I'd say so. I mean, the, um, for this scape, it's, it's fine, yeah. Uh, you could argue that the light's going to be a little bit dimmer on the sides, because it's not a mm. full-length light on this tank, mm. but the plants were growing, and, um, and this scape, it, it's, it's perfect, really. It is, and the colour rendition is beautiful, very natural. Yeah, it's great. Um, yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's really good greens, good reds. Um, yeah, yeah, nothing too like saturated or over vibrant. It is quite a natural colour rendition, yeah. 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 What are we talking money? How much? Uh, they are about 500, I believe. That's not bad. Roughly. Yeah, yeah. similar to the uh, Twin Star. Yeah, more Cost than twin star. Oh. Twin star, you're looking at about 350. Oh, for a 90. Yeah. Oh, okay, that's cool. Interesting. Yeah. And that's suspended, of course. And then, how long do you have your lights on for, Dave? Uh, we run all the lights here six hours, eight hours on a Saturday, but a bit longer. Okay. Six hours seems to be the kind of sweet, sweet spot. spot. Um, if it's a new scape, I put the tanks on for about four hours. You you come up with this like <laughs> yeah. ground, right? This is why you're a visionary, right? Cause you, come up with this technique of having, you give some of the tanks a, uh, a rest, don't you? you do yeah. You tell, yeah. Tell the viewers about the that. One that's worked for me, because I've tried lots of different ways of doing things, yeah. the one that works for me is basically on a new scape, four hours a day of full intensity lighting. Full intensity. Full intensity, and then you'd have a couple of days rest. So, you, so that, say, that'd be your seven day week, and you would do that for a few weeks. Okay, so Monday to Friday, four hours. Full yeah. whack, and then maybe the weekend no light at all. Yeah, we well, could split those days up if you wanted to. Oh, okay. I don't think that. Makes as sense. long as it's kind of two, I, I feel, um, it just gives those plants a little bit of a rest because if they're new, new plants adapting to new tank, new mm. roots, new root growth, and you're going for it. Yeah. Put down the gas. Yeah. They kind of freak out a little bit. Okay. Um, so I've just found. I mean. I, yeah, I just found that it seems to work and it really helps limit the algae. And when the plants are growing for four hours a day, they're growing on a full intensity, going for it, and you can get them growing in quite quickly that way, but not too long that you get some algae. Ah, interesting. Yeah. So you're giving the plant what it needs, but not enough to give algae what it needs. Yeah, exactly. Basically. Yeah, yeah. Okay. and the plant can grow in that con in the conditions of 100% light. So because you, you know how you know different intensities of lighting can grow plants differently. Yeah, of course. They'll be either be stringy under low light, more compact under high light. Yeah. So what we're doing is get that real compact growth just for short periods, and then as the as the plant mass and things settle in, you can yeah. extend that period. Yeah. And you're less likely to get algae at that point. That's really interesting. And take note of this. This is really cool. So, and another really good tip that I've learned from you lately is the common kind of potential misconception is that to avoid algae you turn the intensity of the light down yeah but in a high tech aquarium you know with more demanding plants you, yeah. that's the wrong thing to do isn't it and why is that for me it is um, yeah. and i mean there's more more than one way to skin a cat more than one way of doing things but for me i've seen it so many times where customers start to get on 50 percent right up to 60 then 70 perhaps and they start seeing algae and they go ah you know panic because yeah. you don't want algae obviously so then they cut back and you're back to 60 or back to 50 okay and that kind of for me it, it stalls and it prolongs that period of that algae duration that you're inevitably going to get for a few weeks yeah but i i always say to customers and for me my experience carrying on to 100 percent you 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 will get past that algae period yeah. and the plant growth will be better for being on 100 percent light and you're short on that window that area where you do get algae growth. I feel that medium light is the hardest, if that makes sense. You know, low light, easy. Yeah. High light for me, easy. Medium light. Tricky. Medium Tricky. Light. Tricky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. All the plants in here are relatively easy, aren't they? Yeah. Go, I haven't got any tricky plants at I all. I mean, you could, you could grow a lot of these plants without CO2 under low light. Mm. They perhaps wouldn't look as vibrant or you know you perhaps wouldn't get that intense pearling mm. um the java fern trident you might struggle with a little bit sometimes mm. it goes a bit black i've found under mm. under low light um the growth might not be as dense or as thick the moss but they, they'll still all survive you know be more more mm. wild and chaotic mm. um, whereas with high light and co2 you can get that really dense you know boost of philandra growth mm. you get the mosses and the ferns looking really nice colors and everything everything just looks I lusher yeah, I adore those lilies. They're beautiful. Do you have to trim them regularly? 
Yeah, I tried to keep that little opening in the middle there. Yeah. Um, and I tried to keep a little bit of white mm. open area there. And what, just dropping the vallis out because the vallis is a brute, you know yeah. what I say. Yeah. That tries to go through the lilies, so uh, I tried to pluck the vallis out from below <laughs> to yeah. allow the lilies to flourish in that middle bit. Yeah. It's worth talking about the water we have here. In, yeah. We live in Huntingdon, in Cambridgeshire, England, and the water's very hard. Yeah. Yeah, most people would know that it's harder to grow most plants in harder water, so mm -hmm. I think we maybe have to use more CO2 and maybe a bit more light in nutrients than maybe softer water folk. Yeah, well, I find we have to turn your CO2 on a lot earlier because it, it generally takes a lot longer to raise those CO2 levels in the tank in harder water. How do you know that? Just through experience. Not through drop checker or? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, through through drop checker would tell you. And if yeah. you, we find a lot of people who are using local hard tap water and turn their lights on, uh, CO2 on just an hour before the lights. The CO2, it's hard to get that drop checker the right colour yeah. in just an hour. So we always tell people knock it back a bit further, three, mm. four hours, sometimes five or six before the lights on a big tank. So the bigger the tank, the longer time before the photo yeah, period starts. Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. So how how long? This before. one's about four or five hours before the lights. Wow. I need to start. Maybe that's why I'm getting algae. Well, I mean, it, it may well be that the drop checker's going to be green, maybe three hours in on this gate, but you right. can't you can't go too too no. too long. No. But the important thing is you just monitor that drop checker when your light turns on in the morning. Have a look at it. If it's still dark green and not perfectly green, yeah. not the CO2 back an hour. A bit before. Or two more. Interesting. Yeah. Um, any disadvantages apart from wastage of having CO2 on 24-7? Um, other than wastage, I don't really think so. I um, guess as long as you've got enough surface agitation because of the oxygen, potential oxygen yeah. depletion in the evenings. I suppose if anything goes wrong with the CO2, then, you know, say you increase it by accident, then if, if it knocks off, if the CO2 turns off and the light goes off, yeah then you, it might recover from any accidents a bit easier, but, but other than that, its pH is going to be stable because the CO2 is all, all the same all the time. Mm. Um, there's no harm in leaving the CO2 on 24-7 if you set it right. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. I have it on 24-7 on my cichlid tank actually, yeah. but I just have it on a very low level. So yeah. it's just like a cr um, yeah, background level, probably mm. you know, like 10, 15 parts mm. yeah. instead of 30, which what, is it what you're aiming for, yeah, CO2? Yeah, it's what a, a green drop checker will indicate 30 parts. Yeah. And if you're sort of going into yellow drop checker, then yeah, that's yeah. when it can cause some harm to the fish. And how are you actually injecting that? Is that on an inline? Yeah, inline CO2, CO2 art diffuser. Oh, let's talk about the diffuser, uh, sorry, the regulator. This is a strideways. Yeah, Strideways Regulator. I've had great results with these. These are really nice. Yeah, they're a regulator of choice at the moment from us. They're, they're super reliable. Yeah. Um, you know, a few more, a bit more expensive, but you know, not that much more expensive than, than say, for example, a CO2 art regulator. Mm -hmm. Um, but they're extremely reliable and the needle valves very good as well. Yes, and uh, very easy to add extra, like a manifold to run two tanks or three yeah. tanks. I'm running two Scaper Line 60s on my strideways now. Yeah, yeah. I will do a full in-depth review of mine actually because I'm really impressed. Yeah. I've been running it for a few months now. Yeah, good. Yeah. And um, I, uh, my other brand of choice is Greenleaf Aquariums. Oh, yeah. Uh, so even, you know, sort of top end. Yeah. Um, yeah. And only available in, I think only, generally only available in North America. Yeah, US, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, shout out to Strideways. So, um, is that a European brand? Yeah, European brand, yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. cool. Uh, quite new. Yeah, no, uh, really impressed. So on the nutrient side of things, um, liquid fertilizers, what are you, what are you uh, saying? APT3 Complete, which is uh, a fertilizer by the two hour Aquarist. That's Dennis Wong. Dennis Wong, indeed, yeah. He's, he must be doing well, business-wise, he seems to be I There's a lot, so, lot of yeah, good products out there. He's doing. expanded quite quickly that brand of products, and yeah. um, well, for good reason because they all they all work and yeah. very good in, yeah. in my opinion. Um, I think he's probably had the APT three out for almost three years now, maybe yeah. two and a half years, something like that. Yeah. Um, he's also got an APT zero, which is yeah. the ultra lean fertilizer with no nitrogen or phosphorus in. Oh, okay. Um, a bit like a Tropica Premium. Yeah, yeah, but I find that. The formula, or whatever formula they use yeah. for these fertilizers, are more geared towards high energy 
aquascaping to highlight and CO2 mm -hmm. uh, because that's what he does personally. He, yeah. he grows lots of weird and wonderful colourful plants he does, on yeah. very, very high lights, yeah. tons of CO2 and um, you know whatever fertiliser formula he uses yeah. um, is it, suitable for what we do too rather than just a normal off the shelf okay. um, general fertiliser. Yeah. So you can follow the instructions on the bottle yeah. exactly, you don't yeah. have to change them at all okay. and it's perfect for what we do. Excellent. Relatively expensive, or is it um, price point similar to other? Bits more expensive, I would say, maybe ten or twenty percent more expensive okay. than a, a bigger brand of one, let's say. Interesting. Yeah. Oh, cool. But it's it gives better results. It's you you have better results for me. Two things: better colours and less green spot algae. Those are the main two things that I. Ah, interesting. Manage. Green spot algae is one of those stubborn ones, isn't it? It's really hard to yeah, get rid of it once you've got it. Yeah. It's yeah. Annoying. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, that's really that's really interesting. Do you get much algae on the glass on this tank? Um, uh, barely anything. Really? Yeah, it's probably one of the best tanks for that. Actually, it's so old and stable now. Um, having said that, I run a sponge over it every week, yeah. whether it's there or not. Yeah. You can get a biofilm that yeah. you can't see. Of course. You may as well just get it off. Yeah. It's, uh, it's so stable. This tank. Um, it's How the long great it, thing about a long-term tank. How long has it been running? 20 months roughly, oh. 21 months maybe. Okay. Um, and after that amount of time, you know, your filtration and your substrate and everything's just going to be going to be maximised um, in terms bio biologically. Um, and your plant growth is obviously so mature that the tank almost becomes a little self-sustaining ecosystem, provided you do your water change. Mm. You do need to flush out every week. Yeah, you do in a high tech tank, don't you? I've yeah. been getting a bit more experience of low tech now, which has mm. been a been an eye opener for me. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah did you? I haven't done much of that in a long time. <laughs> no, and yeah. I, I did a, one of my recent videos. I kind of called myself out for having a bit of a superiority yeah. complex, you know, yeah. like looking a little bit down on yeah. people with low tech. Cause yeah. Oh, no, I, don't I don't think that. That's. Um, no. I think it's a a great side to the hobby and a great entry point for anybody getting into aquascaping because yeah. let's face it, a high energy aquascape is expensive. It's a big investment. And if you, it's your first one, you're not necessarily gonna go all out and buy yeah. a full expensive system. So you look more budget and towards a low energy tank, which yeah. is generally cheaper yeah. to start off. And you know, you, you get the bug and you decide you like it, yeah. and this is the hobby for you, and then you work your way up, generally. Yeah, you, you want to reduce that barrier of entry as much as possible for yeah. beginners, don't you? Make yeah. it make it easy and accessible, yeah. and, and not so expensive, because yeah. if, yeah, if they, they, yeah, you just want to make it easy for people it's, to, it's, to enjoy. It's a side of the business that I've, I'd like to expand into as well. Yeah. Um, I mean, at the moment we, we're very specific on, on how we present ourselves and what we offer, yeah. and that's high energy, high energy aquascaping. Um, but given the space, you know, it's something that we would, I personally love to yeah. open a section of the shop that's dedicated to that. Because it's a good entry point. I mean, you can, you can walk in here sometimes as a, as a newbie and be a little bit overwhelmed almost yeah. by, by all of it, because it's a lot to take in. Yeah, so it'd be like walking into a Ferrari showroom yeah. rather than a second-hand car yeah. market, you yeah. know, so yeah, I get that analogy. Interesting. It's just, it's just beautiful. I'm just looking at the oxygen bubbles. I absolutely love seeing oxygen being produced. For me, it's just that creation, you know, you, that life-giving element that's responsible for all life on this planet, you yeah. know, you're actually yeah. seeing it being produced here. Yeah. in this little glass box. Yeah, I remember the first time I used um, CO2 and um, <laughs> got all those, that purling. Yeah. Know, that's such a satisfying thing, is it? Yeah. You come into the hobby. It is. It's kind of seen as a, it's almost like a status symbol in a way. You know, yeah. I've got this yeah, purling plant yeah. and... Uh, yeah, my hemianthus is purling. That's amazing when you first yeah. see it, isn't it? Yeah, and you, and you get the, I'll get some macro footage of the bobbles and it's yeah. just absolutely stunning. Let's talk about the fish. I mean, it's got some Colombian redfin tetras there, beautiful. Yeah, yeah, there's uh, five or six of those in there. Yeah. It's quite a big fish for us, but it suits this scape yeah, really, really yeah. well. We've got the large leaves of the, um, the nymphia over there, yeah. the large bodied fish. They kind of like to hang out, hang out underneath them as well. Yeah. 
And then is it the Red, Red Phantom Tetras? Yeah, Red Phantom, yeah, there's probably about 15 or so in here. And uh, my actually, those yeah, beautiful, really nice colour. Yeah. Uh, Corridorus Julii or? Julii, yeah. Yeah. yeah, six or seven of those in there. I thought about getting some Corridorus for mine now, and now I've got the open sun foreground. Yeah, these, you, these, are, these are really cool. They're, they're just like little schnauzers snuffling yeah, around, yeah, aren't they? Like that. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I love them, really, really we, cute. We feed them some little Denelay cookies or algae waves and bundle on top of those. Nice. So I've noticed you've got a couple of ADA products, Dave. What are these? Yeah, there's quite a few ADA products in the range, but these are the core ones that we uh, recommend and use. That's clear water. So that's basically a flocculant. What does um, a flocculant do? A flocculant basically, when you only get cloudy water and all the particles in there um, make it appear cloudy, well, that flocculant combines all those into, I don't know, sludge or flake, you know, for some sort of form, mm -hmm. mass, where the filter can pick it up, it will collect down in the substrate, mm -hmm. and that will make your water even clearer than it already is. Awesome. And then you've got soft water. Soft water we use in a tank like this, where we've got, I've got quite a few different fish species in here. You might just want to make the water slightly softer and lower the acidity a little bit. Um, seems to help with some, some fish. I only use that in, in tanks where the fish maybe, I feel they might require it. I wonder what it is, like an acid, I guess. I guess so, this, yeah. This is to reduce everything down, yeah. like sulfuric acid. So I so drink in it and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> Don't try that at home, guys. <laughs> um, Flourish Advance, what's this? Um, stimulant, basically, for plants, phytohormones, which basically um, stimulates new growth. Like a growth hormone, is it? Yeah, so it basically, if you cut your plants and you want them to recover quicker, let's say, that would be a good thing to add to the tank. Um, it's also got some extra potassium and other bits and bobs in there. It's good, for, good for when you plant new plants or you have a big trim. It's actually got vitamin C in it as well. Has it really? Vitamin? It's called ascorbic acid. Ah, yeah. Okay. yeah. And alanine, aminobutyric acid, glutamic acid, mannitol. Never used it. Interesting. Mm. Yeah, sometimes, you know, I look at the back of these bottles and I think what's in there and I don't really know too much what it means, but, you know, you just you use it and see if it makes yeah. a difference. And if it does, does. use it again. <laughs> yeah. And um, I'm a big fan of if you do change one thing, just change one thing at a time yeah. so you know if it has had an impact. Yeah, exactly, Otherwise, yeah. you're dealing with too many variables, aren't you? Yeah, so I've decided that, that Flourish Advance did make a difference yeah. to the tank. So we, 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 I generally dose it after water change, actually. Interesting. Just, just because. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of water changes, what's your regime? Uh, it's once a week, about, about 75%. So oh, okay. Literally draining it yeah. down to about here. Yep. During that process, we might. You know, waft up some detritus and siphon away things. Uh -huh. Now, often detritus collects between rocks and, and plants, um, and that basically gives the tank a big reset. I like to think of it as. Okay. So all the plant growth that's happened that week, all the waste and pollution effectively that's been produced that week that could otherwise spark out, you're just getting diluted away, mm. and it, it builds up in a tank this like a tank like this mm. quicker than it would a normal fish tank. Mm. I think so. It relies on that water change, really. Yeah, yeah, I get that. Yeah, because the plants are producing waste as well as the fish, aren't they? Yeah. And unless you they dilute that, then yeah. And if you've got a, you know, a, a low energy tank with lots of slower growers, and the plants are growing much slower, then the waste is being produced slower as well. <laughs> Therefore, the rock water change perhaps isn't as, is required as frequently. Yeah. It is really fascinating. Um, I'm going to have a chat tomorrow with a chap who's kept the same aquarium for 28 years. Wow. With no water changes. See, I mean, yeah. That's, that's amazing, isn't that, it? That, that, there you go. I mean, what I said earlier about there's more than one way of doing yeah. things. Yeah. And, that, and that, I think that's something that's really reassuring, yeah. isn't it? There's, there's a method out there probably to suit most, most people, you know, in terms of budget, yes. uh, spare time, the plants you want to grow to suit your own uh, water parameters that is accessible to you. Mm. A lot of people, I think a lot of hobbyists or a lot of beginners especially, they, they want to keep a certain fish or a plant and, and they're fixated on changing their water to suit, yeah. to suit that fish or plant where in my mind it's just much better to keep the fish or plant that's suited mm. to your water because the, the availability of beautiful plants and fish is so vast now. Yeah. Uh, there's something, really is something for everyone I believe. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, I fully agree with that definitely. Yeah. Um, Filtration? I was a Biomaster 600. Oh, There's wow. two of those. Oh, we've got two, okay. One in each side. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, of course, we like to go bigger with the filtration yeah. in a high energy setup. Uh -huh. Goes, you know, you raise one thing, you raise everything, yeah. and this is high energy, so we need high, high filtration. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's that law, isn't it? It's only as good as its weakest part. Exactly. A system, isn't it? Yeah. Any system, you know, in, in, in life is only as strong as its weakest link. What do you, I, I, you do change the media, don't you? Is that right? Yeah, we put CK Matrix in there. Okay. Uh, basically, we replace, replace a lot of the mechanical filtration mm. with biological. Okay. Um, I generally feel that biological filtration is most important, I would say, in, in aquascapes like these. Mm. Uh, the mechanical side of it, obviously, we're, we've got hands in there and siphoning away lots of things yeah. as well. I, th I think it's better to bolster it with um, that biological. Mm. How long do you think you'll keep this running for? Probably, I'll probably just redo it after Christmas, I think, is my plan. Yeah. Did you escape yeah. this yourself? Yeah. 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 yeah so what's the wood? Uh, no old man's needs a wood. Okay. And that's probably, well, it's quite a soft wood, so it, it would keep for a few more years, but it, it's um, sort of decaying a little bit now. <laughs> I've noticed the wood. Shout out to you, actually. You supplied my wood for oh, my yeah, uh, yeah, High Line 400. Yeah. I can visibly see it getting thinner and thinner yeah. and smaller and smaller. And I think the Amano shrimp are literally eating it. Yeah, yeah. And probably, yeah. They probably are, actually. They're yeah, just a little. They'll eat anything. <laughs> yeah, they'll eat plants. Yeah. They eat fish. Yeah, yeah. Like a poorly fish. If you swim past a few Amano shrimp, you'd have it. Yeah, they're like it. a little gang, yeah. aren't they? And they Almost like vultures in the aquarium. Yeah, well, but I think they're yeah opportunistic, aren't yeah. they? Absolutely. Mm. Um, and they're, they're, they're I don't know if you ever get any climb out. Do you ever get any climbing out? In new tanks for some reason. Yeah, Not in a quite sensitive state. to new yeah. new setups, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. 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 Sometimes doing new setups, I guess, because it's a little bit un more unstable at that, st that, st that stage. But yeah. a mature aquascape, they the Amanos yeah. they come out. Okay, as you know, Dave, I'm a huge fan of aquarium plants. Let's go through each species and then I'll get some beautiful macro footage of it for our beautiful viewers out there. Um, so let's start off probably with the most dominant in terms of visuals, the lily. Yes, we've got a uh, Nymphia lotus okay. that's supplied by Tropica. Cool. Uh, comes as a bulb? Yeah, you can buy it as a bulb or if you buy it from Tropica, you get it in a pot with more established leaves and things. Oh, okay, that's cool. Yeah. And then the, in the background, we've got the Valisneria. Yeah, it's Valisneria tiger. So yeah. It's got that small print on it, which where I think it must get its name from. Yeah. And that does well in harder water, doesn't it? So that's probably why it's doing so well in here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. get yeah. carbon from, from the bicarbonates, bicarbonates in the hard well water. CO2, yeah. And then we have, moving on to sort of the wood, we've got the moss. Which moss is that? Uh, it's just Java moss, actually. Okay. And it's the first tank I've ever had Java moss in escape in the shop, weirdly. <laughs> yeah. um, but I love it. Uh, yeah, it's lovely. Uh, good old trident fern. I think yeah. most people know that one by now. Yeah. Uh, what's the big Philandra species, are they? That's red. That's big Philandra red, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, it's got lovely uh, flowers on it at the moment. The yeah. underside of the leaf is like pinky colours. Yeah. Pretty cool. Some Anubius species. Pinto, yeah. It's just the pe is that the only? Oh, you've got some petite, is it? Or? Oh, Anubius petite there, sorry. Yeah, yeah. and then Pinto and that's here. Pinto there, that's right, yeah. 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 That's Tropical Limited Edition or Denelay? Uh, that was Dead Plant from Denelay, I believe. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, some Crips? Yeah, it went to eye green, which has started to get a little bit of like browny colour on it as yeah. well. It's getting older. I, um, I, think, I think Crips take on more colour in harder water. I'm oh, just going right. to put it out there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but, well, yeah, we certainly get some decent colours and things like that. Yeah. It's like a Beckett's Eye, Petchy Eye. Yeah. I love that when it gets older. It gets a real, like, dark brown print on it. Yeah. It's lovely. And I love it when they go shiny. Yeah. They get that weird shine. It almost thinks it's going out of water, you yeah. know, because it's uh, so shiny. Yeah. Uh, is that, I think that's it, isn't it? Um, other than that. What's this? It? Sorry, mate. What uh, soil is it? Uh, remember? Oh, I can't remember, but probably Tropica. <laughs> and you tend to use the ADA power sand underneath? Yeah, ADA power sand underneath, which is that's standard. That's what you now. tend to do, is it, with all yeah. of the additives? Yeah, um, sometimes, but um, the only additive I'd recommend adding on top of that is tourmaline BC. I think that's the only thing power sand doesn't have in it already. Okay. Does um, it have power sand basic and advanced? Yeah, so basic uh, it just has the bamboo charcoal in, I believe, and it doesn't have any of the back to 100, which is dormant bacteria, basically. Okay. Um, if you watch ADA videos, you'll see them use power sand and all their additives on top of that. Mm. It's just how much you want to throw at it, basically. And, 
I've just had a um, thought. I I would correlate um, a, a really good substrate system as the gut microbiome of yeah. the aquarium. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So when you look after your gut as a human, it's actually responsible for a lot of your overall health and is as actually a connection with the brain, the gut and the brain. And you say you get that gut feeling, mm. that's where it comes from. Yeah. So you're thinking with your, they almost think it's like a second brain now. Yeah. And it's responsible for a lot of the, ser almost, I think it, all the serotonin production right. starts off in your gut. Yeah. And so if you look after your gut, you, you become a, a, a much better, a much more healthy mm. person. So if you can have a, a really healthy substrate system, then it's going to actually the look after the, the whole. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think it's so important the substrate. Um, I think it's, you know, soil is expensive, power sand is expensive, um, but if it's the gut of your system, yeah. then it's worth investing in, and it's going to be in there for a couple of years, probably at least, depending yeah. on what long you want to run it. And so it, it's something really, it's something you can't add either. You can't mm. add power sand later on. You can't, it's hard to add soil and replace substrates later on. It's hard enough to do. Sun foregrounds, Dave. I've seen, <laughs> what I've seen what I've done there. Yeah, how did you do that then? Mate? I um, again, shout out to you. You gave me a beautiful bag of ADA oh, Colorado sand, sand, sand yeah, and yeah. I um, took out my old pebble foreground to replace it. Yeah. But I, li I literally took all Here's of. What I found. Cheers, Siri. <laughs> so I, um, yeah, I, li I literally took out the whole foreground and put it in my big 30 litre bucket right. and then it was also full of water mm -hmm. so you can imagine 30 litres of water just under 30 litres of water plus you know right. four feet worth of pebbles and sand yeah. Yeah, you know probably 50 kilos now yeah. we're talking 100 pounds worth of weight right. so I'm like carry it into the garden yeah. you know da, 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 da. and then I think I'm really strong so I tried to, in one swift movement, tried to get the bucket and then just completely launch it all into the back garden amongst all the trees and the plants. Yeah, that's, that's a lot uh, to throw <laughs> It is, and um, it, it was a big lesson for me that I'm not as strong as I thought I was, <laughs> because basically the whole thing slipped. The, the really kind of um, strong metal handle mm. has got um, a hook on the end and then somehow I managed to, the hook kind of just sliced ah. my wrist and a contusion and some cuts yeah, you live and, learn. and stuff like that and um, yeah so just be careful when you accidents yeah <laughs> I mean it's it's quite fun really I it's just did, I did curse a little bit all kind of things like that <laughs> yeah all right, Dave. Is there anything else you wanna you wanna talk about about the scape? You maintain this yourself? Yeah, as I do all the tanks. Um, guys here help me out with the filtration every weekend. Yeah. Clean the pipes and stuff, but I generally enjoy my hands in the tank. So I like to. What is it about maintenance that you love so much? I just like the process, the longevity process of it, of being the one that you know controls the pathway. By where it goes, yeah. to be honest with you. And it's a long term, for me, it's a long term uh, satisfaction. It's, you know, I, enjoy, I enjoy the then and there of doing it as yeah. well, yeah. Um, which is you know, coming to work every week and that's half my job. Yeah. And um, which, yeah, quite lucky to do that. Who wouldn't want to maintain fish tanks for a living as part of their job? And it's not my only job, it's part of it. Yeah. Um, but then, you know, when a tank's this old and you've been the one that's you know, guided it to where it is. It's quite. It's a sense of satisfaction, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. If, if you could, if if you could, sort of magic this into someone's home uh, instantly, uh, they would of course enjoy it, but they wouldn't enjoy it as much as if as, as if they had looked after it and got it to that point. Mm, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, I, well, I think so. Yeah, I think there's, you know, just looking at a tank. I don't think you're going to appreciate it as much, maybe, yeah. um, as if you, you maintained it and you, you're the one that, that got it to where it is. Yeah. I think you can then look at that tank even more mm. and appreciate it even more than you would just walking into a room looking at a tank. Mm. So for me, yeah, I, uh, it's something that I don't need to... I mean, lots of people get to see these tanks, um, obviously, because the shop's open, people walk through mm. and look at them and we, we film them and put them online and things. Yeah. But, um, so there's, a, there's another motivation for me there on another level to look after the tanks, but on a personal level, 
you know, if this was at, this tank was at home, you know, you don't you don't need anyone else to yeah. to get that get get something back for it. It's you in the tank, and mm. and uh, and that's that's for me what what I enjoy the most out of it. I'm with you, Dave. I love it. It's one of the best scapes in the store. I mean, they're all very high standards, but you know, this is exceptional and uh, very you. grateful to be able to talk about it with you. Yeah, thanks. Thank you, Thank you for coming in and, and talking about it. Yeah, it's great. Can I tell you a little story about the Aquascaper 1200? Yes. It was can. the first ever <laughs> aquarium that was created by the Aquascaper brand. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I had the first ever prototype mm -hmm. hand built in England. I um, remember. And yeah. Um, yeah, it was it was a great tank. I learnt, it taught me a lot. I had Kessels on it, I had Twin Star lights on it, and uh, grew various plants, of course, it's in my book, featured in my book quite heavily. And uh, I think it's a beautiful tank. The dimensions are, are, are very interesting, aren't they? 18 inches tall by two feet front to back. Yeah, I think that's what a lot of people, why people go for it is because of that. It's yeah. wide, isn't it? It's really yeah. wide, you've got so much room. Yeah. I mean, it's obviously designed for a bigger living space, having so much kind of it's encroachment good, into your into your room. But, exactly. Yeah. Um, if you've got the space for it, it's a beautiful yeah. dimension to have to work with. Uh -huh. Well, thanks so much, Dave. Always a pleasure to hang out with you, yeah, and um, likewise, so you know likewise. the journey. The journey is just beginning for us in terms of your your business. I hope and. Well, hopefully, we'll continue to, to yeah thrive continue to thrive, thrive and, and exactly. yeah. yeah. How can people find you? Uh, we're based in Huntingdon, or just outside Huntingdon in the UK. Uh, you can find us online, aquariumgardens.co.uk. Social media, Instagram, a few videos on YouTube. Um, yeah. That's about it. Cool, man. Thanks, Dave. Appreciate it, mate. Cheers, man. Thank you. Cheers. How would you describe yourself? What would you, in one word, job title, what would you call yourself? Um, I would call myself business, business owner, business yeah. runner. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Or, well, business aquascaper, if I could combine the two. You could, I'll, I'll go even a bit, I'll go a little bit further, and this is a compliment, I'd yeah, say. Okay. I'd say visionary. Oh, okay. I yeah. think you were the, maybe except for the green machine, Yeah. I think you're the first UK specialist aquascaping store. Yeah. And I think you're the only one that doesn't sell fish. Yeah, currently I think that's that's right. Yeah, yeah. Can you tell people a little bit of a background about how you started? I think people might be curious to. Yeah, I mean, well, before us, there wasn't many aquascaping stores. There was the Green Machine, as you said, um, and back then, aquascaping was less, even less of a thing than it is now. It's yeah. Still quite small and niche now. What year? Um, what year are we talking? Two thousand and fourteen, when I started the business. Okay. Um, and so that was what ten years ago almost, yeah. which is mad. That's just a crazy amount of time. It is, yeah. Um, but to think back to then, um, I couldn't find the things that I wanted to find in most shops yeah. for what I wanted to do, and um, I was just getting into aquascaping, sort of twelve, thirteen years ago myself, mm. um, starting to fish keeper, and then getting inspired by the likes of ADA, mm. the Green Machine, people that I was following on UCAP's forum such as yourself, mm. uh, Practical Fish Keeping mm. um, magazine, I remember looking through articles there and getting inspired there as well. So that's how I got into the hobby yeah. and then that's pretty much how the business was born through Can my own passion and trying to build so a store that, that, that provided for it. You, had, you wanted to solve a problem? Yeah, so the problem maybe, was there was a problem solver is another word another yeah. way to describe myself. But I think well. a lot of um, a lot of the best businesses solve solve a big problem, and that's what that's what brings them yeah. into fruition, I guess. I mean, I suppose I was I was trying to fill a void, fill a fill a niche, fill a demand. Yeah. Because I believe I believe that there are a lot of people who can get into the hobby. Yeah. And I believe that it, its appeal is wider than it is right now. And it certainly is wider than it was back then because the market's grown since then and the hobby's grown since then yeah. through the likes of various people and businesses. Um, but um, yeah, for me, that, that's that's part of my journey and the business's journey is to to fill that void and um, amongst other people who are, are, are currently on the same mission. Yeah. What do you think? You're clearly successful. You've 
tripled in size at least since I first met you. In yeah. terms of physical space, yeah. and I, I don't need to know the numbers, mm. but you, you can tell. You know, you had I think you had one display tank, and now you've got ten. Yeah, yeah, we've got ten. Um, yeah, it's crazy. Um, you have little it's... plastic greenhouses. Yeah, the, the business has changed so much. So, and if I was to look at it now, if I was to look back then, what it is now, I would have probably wouldn't have believed it. Um, but yeah, it's. I, I did always believe that it could, it could, it could succeed. provide for me and provide yeah. for that the business would succeed. But to what extent, I didn't really know. Um, that was always, yeah, that was always the unknown. But here we are. Yeah, I really respect your almost single-minded tenacity. Just to plod on. You don't get distracted. You just. I don't see you getting distracted by yeah. other things that other folk might get distracted by. You, I know you, you're such, you've got a very calm demeanour, and I guess that helps with quite a high because pro- you employ people now, you know, and yeah. it must be quite a high stress it, it dealing with orders, yeah. you know, lots of orders every day. And I mean, although it's a small business, you are still dealing in, with every aspect of it, and yeah. ultimately every part of the business is my responsibility and if anything goes wrong it's, it's on me, it's yeah. on the boss. Um, but there's lots of, with, with any business, there's lots of things to think about and deal with and I've had to learn more than anything the, the, through the process of building the business. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't say that I was, you know, I'm gifted from the start in knowing exactly how to run a business, and exactly how to deal with people, exactly how to organise logistics and everything. I kind of learnt all that yeah. as I've Gone on. That's the beauty of well, that's, know, that's, starting a small business. You, you get yeah. to learn that process. That, that, that's um, that's authentic, organic growth, isn't it? You don't need an MBA no. business. To, you know, you don't need a business master's degree to start a business, especially yeah, these days. Um, no, yeah. I mean a, a lot of it is just. I mean, a lot of it's hard work. Um, there's a lot of sacrifice, a lot of dedication. Yeah. Um, but. Um, yeah, I tend to I tend to try to just take things as they as they come and yeah. deal with one thing at a time and you know and even that I've I've learned you know to, to even now I've learned to slow down a little bit and yeah. you know prioritise things in a certain way. You just learn as you go along and yeah. just gotta take it as it comes really and yeah. not get too worried or distracted as you were saying about yeah. other things that yeah. just take day by day really. Oh, well, congratulations, mate, yeah, on, a, on a, a great business. I'm so lucky to, to live near you. I yeah. talk about this all the time, but <laughs> it's just uncanny, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You know, what are the chances? Yeah, I know. Well, you know, these things are sometimes meant to be. I, I don't actually believe in fate, but funnily enough, something, sometimes you just think, it, you know, how is this, how has this happened? How, the, you know, the, the coincidence. The is coincidence. Just, I think is, that's, I, I believe more in a coincidence yeah. than, than, than perhaps things are meant to be, but it's opportunity, you know, if you yeah. get, if opportunity comes along okay. and you, you know, in your path in life, if you meet someone or something and, you know, and, and you, you either take the opportunity or you don't, that's, that's your, your mm. kind of choice. Yeah, it's great. I, yeah, just really grateful, mate, <laughs> for, for the store and for you and, and the staff and the customers. It's all, it's all fantastic. Yeah, and well, and I appreciate your support along the way as well. It's been always been... It's definitely a symbiotic relationship, isn't it? <laughs> well, it's been quite a Yeah. yeah.